In Christian churches worldwide, it is common to encounter statues depicting the Virgin Mary with Jesus Christ seated on her lap. However, there is a notable distinction when the figures represent a black woman and child rather than a white one. These figures, known as the Black Madonna or Dark Virgin, are not uncommon and are venerated in over 1,000 locations worldwide, with approximately 500 of them situated in Europe. Examples include the Black Madonna of Einsiedeln in Switzerland, which draws 500,000 yearly pilgrims, the Black Madonna of Montserrat, Spain, attracting 1 million visitors, and the Black Madonna of Częstochowa, Poland, with a staggering 4 million visitors. These are just a few instances of the many Black Madonna icons scattered across the globe. Interestingly, the prominence of Marian cults devoted to both Christ and the female Mary coincided with the active period of the Cathars and the Knights Templar, particularly from the 12th to 14th centuries. This correlation becomes even more intriguing when we consider that Mary was explicitly recognized as lacking any divinity at the Council of Ephesus in 431 AD. While many people assume that these Black Madonna statues simply represent the Virgin Mary and Jesus, the reality is far more complex and layered. In this video, I will delve into the true significance of the Black Madonna, exploring the esoteric connections surrounding her. Additionally, I will introduce the concept of the Terran Lux Grid, which sheds light on why the network of shrines dedicated to the Black Madonna must be strategically positioned at specific locations on Earth. So, who is the Black Madonna? The prevailing notion is that she embodies the archetype of the Divine Feminine, encompassing various goddess figures from different traditions. These include Gnostic Sophia, Egyptian Isis, Greek Artemis, Mesopotamian Lilith, Sumerian Inanna, Canaanite Astarte, Roman Diana, Celtic Danu, Tibetan Terra, and Hindu Kali. The dark-skinned depiction of the Black Madonna is believed to stem from the recognition that Africa is the origin of this primal divinity. When exploring African goddesses, one immediately recalls the Egyptian goddess, Isis. In ancient Egyptian art, Isis is frequently depicted seated on her throne, adorned with a crown that symbolizes her connection to the divine. She also wields a scepter, representing her earthly ruling power. Isis grants authority to the king, symbolized by the Jed, a stability symbol placed atop her scepter. Additionally, she carries the Ankh, a symbol of everlasting life that she bestows upon the king. In essence, it is the mother goddess who bestows the power of kingship in the earthly realm and offers eternal life in the celestial realm. When observing images of Isis nursing her child Horus, a striking resemblance to the Black Madonna can be observed. Not only the Black Madonna, but even common depictions of the Virgin Mary and child Jesus often portray Virgin Mary wearing a crown or carrying a scepter, evoking the imagery of Isis. This raises intriguing questions about whether the Virgin Mary, as we know her, may have roots in an even earlier lineage. However, even Isis is not the earliest African goddess. She is believed to be a remnant of a goddess from an earlier civilization based in Nubian Marrow, where succession followed the female line, and queens had the option to rule jointly with their husbands or sons. This suggests that our current structure, with a male god attaining supremacy and a patriarchal succession power structure, emerged later in history. The earliest structure likely involved the worship of a female goddess, aligning with a matrilineal power succession. Evidence of early religions centered around goddesses can be found in the tangible artifact known as the Venus of Whole Fells, discovered in Germany and crafted approximately 35,000 years ago. This Venus figure highlights voluptuousness and emphasizes reproductive attributes, symbolizing her role as the universal mother. In fact, the earliest African goddess is thought to have ancient origins dating back as far as 60,000 BCE. Her name is Kore, who serves as an underworld guardian of the inner earth and is also referred to as the Lady of the Midnight Sun. She carries the Sun King, the child born from her union with the Cosmic Divine, in her lap. Melchizedek, in his role as Archangel, installed a specific earth grid called the Terran Lux or Midnight Sunday. This grid encompasses original sites where the Black Madonna statues were placed to invoke the presence of this ancient goddess. The concept behind this grid is that in the beginning, there was a diverse range of energies that allowed our world to develop, but more importantly, a primeval, mother consciousness. The Black Madonna statues and the activation of these sites serve as a means to reconnect with these original creational feminine energies that have been lost or deactivated over time. The way to reactivate these sites is through active veneration, and the reactivation of these sites simultaneously restores the energetic flow of the original feminine energies. This original template, known as the Grail, can be considered the energetic medium for storing, maintaining, and eventually transforming our DNA and consciousness, allowing humans to achieve ascension. This explains why the Black Madonna holds such significance in the present era. Many individuals are instinctively drawn to these sacred sites, unknowingly propelled by a deeper purpose, to assist in the activation of these locations and contribute to the profound shift of consciousness towards the Aquarian Age. The growing recognition and attraction to the Black Madonna reflects a collective yearning for the restoration of ancient feminine energies in order to heal the broken energies in Earth. The Grail, in addition to its energetic nature, also manifests physically through specific bloodlines that can be traced through matrilineal lines. 
This grail bloodline is present for example in Virgin Mary, Mother of Jesus. Different groups have been involved in the installation, maintenance, and perpetuation of the grid throughout history. The first group were the Druids, and other groups included the Knights Templar, the Cathars, the Caldry, and the Chaldees. Several pagan groups, such as the Nainain and the Kamal, were also involved. Among these groups, I will highlight two of the significant ones here. Firstly, there is a branch of the Jesus Grail lineage known as the Merovingians. They descended from John Martinus, the son of Jesus and Mary Magdalene. The Merovingians attempted to establish the royal hierarchy of the world but were unsuccessful in their endeavors. Another group linked to the bloodline of Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene is the First Cathars. Saint John the Beloved, who wrote the Book of Revelations on the Isle of Patmos in Greece, married a woman named Lucinda, who had Celtic, Hebraic, and Roman ancestry. Lucinda carried the Grail bloodline from her Celtic-Hebraic lineage. Their descendant married a descendant from the Jesus-Mary coupling, and this lineage became the innermost circle of the Cathars. One of the treasures that was transported out of Montsegur before its fall was a statue of the Black Madonna, crafted by St. John on the Isle of Patmos. From an artistic perspective, the statue may not have been impressive, but it was infused with spiritual energies when St. John entered a trance state to channel the Book of Revelations. As a result, the statue continues to be a powerful talisman. Survivors from both lineages continued to venerate and protect these Black Madonna sites, even up to the present day. Since we are discussing the offspring of Jesus and Mary, there is another theory regarding the Black Madonna that has gained popular support. According to this theory, when Mary Magdalene arrived in southern France and landed at Saint Mary's de la Mer, one of her companions was Sarah the Gypsy, also known as Sarah la Cali or Saint Sarah. Legend has it that Sarah, believed to be of Romani or Gypsy descent, gradually became associated with the Black Madonna due to her dark skin tone. Over time, a cult of devotion developed around her, and she became recognized as the patron saint of the Romani people in the Camargue region of southern France. An annual festival is held in her honor at Saint Mary's de la Mer. But another theory suggests that Sarah, instead of having Romani blood, may in fact have been the daughter of Jesus and Mary. In a future video, I will delve into the untold history of Jesus, beyond what is covered in the Bible, as well as his offspring resulting from his relationship with Mary Magdalene. If this topic interests you, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Among all the Terran Lux grid sites, for hold particular importance. They form a tripole consisting of Montserrat, Spain, Chartres and Lourdes, both in France, and the center vault at Glastonbury Tor, England. The energy flows from the outer nodes into these tripoles, creating a spinning field around the center vault which concentrates that energy into the center of the planet. The energies will then recirculate from the center of Earth back into the outer nodes. Presently, Black Madonna statues are found at all these tripoles, except for Glastonbury Tor. In Lourdes, the two statues are housed in the Lourdes New Parish Church. However, in ancient times, there was an original Black Madonna statue in Lourdes, which was destroyed as it was considered pagan. It's important to note that Glastonbury Tor does not contain, nor has it ever had, a statue of the Black Madonna. Instead, there is a vibrational presence of an actual being known as Tor Hanna, an Egyptian Atlantean priestess. Her body rests in a suspended state beneath the Tor, in a dimension slightly different from our own. Torhanna still holds the original divine feminine DNA blueprint, the Grail, for Earth. If you want a more comprehensive list of the Terran Lux grid sites, I recommend referring to the book, The Cult of the Black Virgin, which you can find the link to in the description of this video. When you visit any of the Black Madonna sites, you can engage in a meditation practice to establish a personal connection with the Lady of the Midnight Sun. According to Atlantean beliefs, the Lady's crown emits radiant jewels, which serve the purpose of veiling our eyes, enabling us to gradually adapt our vision to our inner brilliance. These jewels are of eight types, ruby slash garnet, golden topaz, blue sapphire, emerald, moonstone, tourmaline, rose quartz, and diamond. To begin, enter a meditative state and visualize these gemstones encircling your crown chakra, creating a veil of sacred light that envelopes your entire body. Imagine that the Lady of the Midnight Sun adjusts the frequency of these jewels, ensuring that you only receive what you are ready and capable of receiving in the present moment. Lastly, invite the Lady of the Midnight Sun to reveal her presence to you and be open to receiving any impressions or insights that may come to you.